Hey guys, great to see you again here on Sob Talk Live, the show by a couple of guys who love sobs, for guys who love sobs. I'm E. Kelso. We're here every Thursday at 8 p.m. with stories about sob owners and information to help keep your sobs running great on the road. So, Mark, uh, I am excited for uh, the program tonight because uh, we're going to focus about something that means a lot to guys, and that is the interior of their car. And, you know, lots of guys are driving around with ripped and kind of messed up interiors. And so our guest tonight is going to help us get through that. And this is somebody that, that you've already met. I didn't know that until just a few minutes ago. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, Kelly and myself met at the Saab Owners Convention back in 2018, and we had a little chance to meet up uh, and talk about some Saabs at the time, and it was a very fun experience, especially when we were uh, taking our cars around the track and seeing what they could do. Well, let's welcome to the program uh, Kelly Kanati, Dr. Kelly Kanati, uh, also on YouTube as the Saab Magic Man. Kelly, good to see you again. Thanks for joining us. Thanks. Good to be seen. Yeah. So tell me about this experience you guys had together at this event. So <laughs> what, what did you just say, Kelly? There was this big 9-5 run on your back end on the track or something? Well, yeah, we had a, we had a track event, um, a, a road course, and uh, I had no idea what the 9,000 would do. It was completely stock. And uh, we got out on the track and, you know, the 9,000 is leaning way over and rubbing the tires and you know, just basic, it's an automatic, basically just, you know, trying to go fast, but couldn't really go fast. And then in my rear view mirror, the whole time was this 9.5, this, this red 9.5. And uh, I'm thinking, geez, you know, I'd love to pull over, but they don't allow passing on this track. And uh, so we finished up that, that one. And uh, it was Mark right behind me, you know, you know, trying to force me off the track so he could get moving. Well, we're going to start tonight by talking about your, your 9,000, uh, Kelly. And uh, the reason is you sold this car on Bring a Trailer. And Bring a Trailer has become a place where lots of guys are trying to move and shift their sobs and get the best possible dollar. So I want to hear from you about the experience you had dealing with these guys, because I know it's kind of tough. You have to have a pretty high quality car to get on BAT, right? Yeah, you do. I mean, years ago, I started following BAT before it was an auction site. And uh, they would do articles and they'd, they'd have links to Craigslist ads and things like that. And I actually had a, a car that was on uh, BAT as, a, as an article um, that I sold on Craigslist. But uh, so I've been following it for years and I, I figured, well, you know, if the car is suitable, I'll, I'll get uh, top dollar on BAT. But it, it's it's like it's like an audition. It's not easy. You just don't list the car and have it go up for sale there's a there's a whole process you have to go through and the car actually has to be accepted for a sale on their site so this is your this is a 94 9000 euro is that right that's right and uh you it, sold this car yeah it's a cse it's not an arrow okay cse and uh Boy, it's, it's very handsome. Like all of your cars, Kelly, you keep these cars looking so great. Uh, and that's, I suppose, you know, Mr. Saab Doctor Interior Guy, we shouldn't be surprised that uh, the interior looks as clean and straight as it does. Good work. Oh, yeah, it was a beautiful car. As a matter of fact, I, it was so beautiful, I was afraid to drive it. So, so I figured I'd have to sell it. Yeah, what's the point? So where'd you get this car? Oh, geez, well... A Facebook guy referred me to a Craigslist ad. Uh, was for sale in Colorado. It belonged to the uncle, I think. No, the grandfather of the guy who listed it. Um, the guy had Alzheimer's disease, so he couldn't drive anymore. And so the uh, grandson put put an ad up to sell it. So it was a California car. Um, by way of Texas, sold out of Colorado. Ah, so these cars are uh, kind of interesting. You know, there's uh, one of the comments uh, when you sold your car. I clipped this off or bring a trailer. Um, it says, you know, true Saab enthusiasts know exactly how underrated the brand is, but the 9000 in particular, you can call it a Fiat or Italian Saab. But if you haven't driven or owned one, you're missing out on a truly remarkable car. So we're going to get to the whole Italian thing in just a moment. But uh, did you think this car was that remarkable? Is it really all that great to drive? Uh, yeah, 
yeah, it's a very comfortable car to drive. Um, you know, the interior was spotless. It, it was just a very easy, powerful car to drive. And, uh, you know, it, it, it was in such good condition that it was almost brand new. I forgot how many miles I had on it at the time, but certainly it was less than 60,000 wow. miles. And uh, it, it's just a pleasure to drive. What did you get out of this car in the auction? Uh, it went for $10,240. Well, look at it. It's in fantastic Amazing. shape. Yeah. Really nice. Uh, so here's a little bit of information. I, I didn't know a lot about 9,000s, and so I did a little looking and found out that um, these uh, cars were built on a platform that was shared as well with Alfa Romeo, Fiat, and Lancia, I think. Yeah, it was Lancia. Yeah. And, uh, um, and so there is a look at under the hood on your car. Let's, uh, let's bounce over here, and let me show you. This is what the Alpha looks like. This is an Alpha 146, and supposedly they used um, the, the chassis from the 9000, and that was about it, put their own engine in it and whatnot. Uh, none of the other body panels, that's all they shared. Now, I know a guy we're going to have on the show somewhere down the road here who is a um, uh, crazy sub guy who, who bought one of these things. He says they drive totally different. This is the Fiat. It's called the Fiat Chroma. And it does look, this one looks a heck of a lot like, like your Saab, doesn't it? It does. It does. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, what I was reading is that um, there are only seven parts out of these cars that were interchangeable and Saab put <laughs> in strengthening pillars in the doors and strengthened the front end of them for crash worthiness that none of the other manufacturers did. So, you know, once again, good on Saab for all of that. Yeah. Yeah. No kidding. So the story is on your car. Uh, let me go back and show you some of the under the uh, underneath shots just at how clean this car is. So how tough was getting the description written and everything? How long did it take? And generally, how was working with Bring a Trailer? Well, what you do is you, um, you sign up to sell a car, and they want you to uh, ask, answer some questions. They have a questionnaire. They want you to submit some photographs. Um, they like to know if you want a reserve or not, and they really do not like reserves on cars. And uh, they ask you all these questions, and then if they accept the car, then you pay your money. I think it's about a hundred bucks, and uh, they do the write-up. So you know, you tell them details about the car, a little history, uh, whatever, and they have people who do the write-up now. I wasn't completely enthralled with the write-up they did on that car, and we had to go back and forth several times uh, with corrections. But um, basically, once they accept the car and you answer all the questions, it takes a couple weeks to get it listed. Hmm. Seems like a fairly extensive process. I mean, uh, it's almost like they have to vet each particular applicant for their cars to be available to go on their platform. Well, they do actually. And, um, you know, it, it did take, like I say, a couple of weeks and up front, I had provided all of the pictures you see and, you know, on that listing and details and answered all their questions. And still, uh, we had to go back and forth, like I say, correcting some of the, some of the text. And also they didn't want to do a reserve. And I wanted a reserve. So mm -hmm. we went back and forth on that, uh, three or four emails back and forth. And finally, they relented uh, at a reserve a little bit less than I wanted. Um, and, you know, in the end, it sold for above reserve, obviously. So, um, you know, they got what they wanted. I got what I wanted. And somebody got a nice car out of the deal. Yeah, I love the fact that you put a little thermometer in the uh, in the vent there to show people that yeah, the air conditioning really works. That was a great idea. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So deal. hey, so uh, this car then s popped up again on Bring a Trailer, and what happened to that guy? Well, the guy who bought it, um, he contacted me after a while to see if I wanted to buy it back uh, because he said his life situation changed and. He really couldn't keep it. He had no place to store it. And Bring a, tra bring a Trailer wouldn't let him relist it. Um, hmm. 
so uh, yeah so i said well you know give it give it some time um they may have a waiting period before you can automatically relist on bat just uh, to prevent car flippers from getting on there and i guess the appropriate amount of time was a year and they let him relist it he did sell it though he took a loss he sold it for eight thousand dollars wow well you don't want to see anybody get take a loss like that but i guess yeah. you know, it happens what are you going to do yeah. hey, so i just wanted to share that with you because uh you know bat is is uh getting to be such a big deal with people and um that's why i kind of wanted to have you on to talk about that experience um Tell me more about uh, how you got into interior repair. I'm, I'm really interested in hearing more about that as well. Well, I'm, I'm kind of a stickler for having a nice, clean, well-sorted interior. Um, and nothing bothers me more than ripped seats or, you know, holes in the leather. And that, that's just a turnoff for me. So when I look at a car, and uh, I'm through buying cars now, and my wife's happy about that. But <laughs> when I look at a car, I pay attention, of course, to the mechanicals. And I like the exterior to be, you know, in good shape. But I really focus on the interior because that's where you live in the car. You live in the sure. interior. Mm -hmm. And uh, if it runs well, uh, you know, I want to have a nice living space. So I would discount cars, you know, with lousy interiors. And uh, I've been lucky so far. Um, I've had cars that the interiors were at least in very good condition and I knew that I could make repairs to, you know, to buff that up a little bit. That's good. So you've uh, done quite a bit of uh, work on various techniques. Uh, on your YouTube channel, I saw you recover a Saab 900 dashboard. Right. Right. So you yeah. saw so you like do a lot of repair. What else are we going to find on your YouTube channel? Well, I like to experiment, um, and you know, I'll go to the junkyard and I'll pull a a leather seat out of a car just to you know experiment on fixing the cracks or fixing the holes. And uh, you know, you'll find on on the YouTube channel little fixes like recovering the parcel shelf, or uh, I think I've got. Uh, big and seat repair on there i've got a seat seam repair lots of people have seams that are coming apart and that's been quite popular and just little things you can do to spiff it up a little bit kelly what a great segue that's where we're going next let me bring their video up here we're going to uh, take a look at um, just how you are repairing uh, the seats Oh, there, there's the little thermometer that you yeah. had up in that car. That's great. Yeah, so great idea there to show people that. Uh, yeah, that's, that's pretty cool. Yeah, it is pretty cool. Great air conditioning. 42 <laughs> degrees. Yeah, that's great. Uh, so let's let's look at you doing some of the seat seam repair and uh, just, just kind of talk us through this, will you? Well, seats, when the, when the seam lets go, it's usually just a failure of the thread. Um, and if it's, if it's not too bad, if the if the seam isn't too large and you're not relying on the under underneath structure um, of the seat that much, uh, you know, the, the way these covers are constructed is they're, you, they usually have metal frames uh, under the leather that connect down to the seat frame. Um, so if the seam isn't that big, all it takes is a simple repair to pull it back with some thread. And uh, before it gets really bad, you can nip it in the bud if it's two or three inches long. Mm -hmm. So I see you using a, uh, a, a curved needle there. That probably calls upon your medical training uh, and suturing up uh, yeah. all that kind of stuff. So are those things hard to find? Where do I get those? Oh, no, Amazon. Problem is, you know, there's some cheap ones and they can break easily. So, you know, you got to get a real heavy duty curved needle you know, to, to have a go with this. You can do it with a straight needle um, as long as it's sturdy. Yeah, I see you using the hemostats there. So again, another <laughs> another tool of your trade, so right. to speak, yeah. Yeah, you could, you could stuff, you know, you could use a needle nose pliers for that. Sure, sure. So uh, what are you doing here? So you're, you're just going side to side across the seat? To yeah, well, your seat? what you do is you have to tease back the... Uh, 
the seam a little bit so you have loose ends from the original thread. And then the holes are already there from the original um, seam. So all I'm doing is going back and forth through the original holes, back from the one side over to the other side. And uh, once you know I've traversed the whole length of the repair, then you tighten it up. Um, just like you know, a pair of sneakers, you tighten up all the all the uh, thread until it's really tight, and then you tie knots at the end and bury the knots. It's pretty. It's a pretty easy, simple repair. Hmm. Gosh, you know, most guys would never think that they could do that on their own. So good well, for you. I yeah, that's the thing. I, I like to experiment. I don't know if I can do it, so I try it, and you know, if it works out well, good. If it doesn't, I haven't lost much. I've just maybe learned something. But this particular repair is it's pretty darn easy to do. And, you know, really there's no excuse to leave a, a seam apart like that because it's only going to get worse. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good point. Now, I did have a question for you, Kelly. Now, this here is a seam that was, you know, already there and meant to be sewn together. Do yeah. you happen to have any experience with any um, cuts in leather? that have been, you know, either from like a sharp object or something like that and damaged the leather or it was like a cut or a slit. Is there anything there that you would recommend as far as repair? Yeah. Um, I may or may not have a video on my YouTube channel uh, on this. As a matter of fact, um, my 9,000 arrow, not the one I sold, my red one, um, had a hole in the seat. And there's a process you go through where you you glue a piece of leather or vinyl behind the hole, and then you fill it in with filler. Mm. Basically, you know, if it's a small hole or a, uh, you know, a, a rip or a tear, you can make you can make repairs. One of the things I always say is, just make it less noticeable. You're not mm. going to make it perfect. You're not a professional. There are professionals who do this, and they're very expensive. And if you want a 100% professional job that nobody would ever notice, uh, you know, go ahead and pay for it. Otherwise, make a simple DIY repair and just make it less noticeable. Like the seam, everybody's gonna notice the seam if it's wide open. Sure. If, you just, if you just sew it together and close it up, it's not gonna be noticeable. Gotcha. So I've got, I'm, my daily is a, a, a Volvo S80 and, um, the I've got a couple of wear holes in in the leather there, so this patch stuff it won't crack. It's flexible enough to handle the, the, that wear point in the seat. Well, it depends on how big the hole is, obviously. But if you have a wear hole, um, you can't pull the sides together. You know, you're going to have to fill it in with filler. And the the thing with filler, it is very flexible, but you have to be patient when filling it because if it's a big rent. Um, it's going to take you a while. You're going to have to do a layer, let it, let it dry and harden. You have to do another layer. And to make it not as noticeable as a whole, it may take five, six, seven, eight, nine coats and stuff. Oh, wow. and it is pretty, uh, you know, it is pretty um, flexible. So it will hold up unless it's a huge hole. You know, I would say if the hole is quarter size or less, it's pretty easy to repair that. Oh, I'm, I'm, in, I'm in the game then. That's not bad. Hey, Donald Northam's asking uh, most rewarding individual refurb or car overhaul. What's, uh, what's in your career that you think fondly of? Oh, geez. Uh, you know, I, I can get by on mechanics. I'm not a big mechanic for big things like overhauls or transmissions or things like that. But uh, my SPG, my 86 SPG, um, I did... I did a refurb on the interior on that thing, and I'm probably most proud of that. That's good stuff. Yeah. You know, we were talking briefly about the repairs to the leather itself as far as holes and tears and so on and so forth. Is there a point, uh, Kelly, that you've come across to where a person would actually try to replace a seat cover rather than trying to repair a rip? I, mean, I know there are some parts still available, although it is becoming less and less as time goes on. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, as a matter of fact, my uh, my uh, 900 convertible, my C900 convertible. What I did was I switched the passenger seat bottom for the driver's seat bottom to try and even out the wear. 
I've, um, I found, you know, in the junkyard, I found good passenger seats, but lousy driver's seats. Uh, as a matter of fact, one of them was uh, a vegan style seat. So I just took the bottom of that seat and I replaced it into my vegan. So yeah, there are times when you can find parts of the seat cover, you can find the whole seat, uh, or you can switch them like I did on my convertible so that I could even out the wear. You know, one seat looked perfect, the passenger seat, and the driver's seat looked good, but you know, the, the wear was uneven. Well, by switching the seats, I could even out the wear over time. Oh, Never wow. knew that they were interchangeable. I had no idea. That's a great, uh, that's great to yeah, know. Most seats have interchangeable covers because, you know, it doesn't really make sense for the factory to make two different covers. You know, they might have holes in different places, uh -huh. you know, for the seat release mechanisms, things like that. But the covers are, are mostly the same for the drivers and the passenger seat. And, uh, you know, as a matter of fact, I used a passenger uh, vegan seat back for my driver's seat uh, on my, I have some spare uh, vegan seats in the garage. I actually took the cover off the passenger seat and put it on the driver's seat. And I just put a little patch over the hole that was left from the seat mechanism. Sure. Hey guys, if uh, we have a lot of people watching and if uh, you have a question for Kelly, I want him to address anything, uh, just go ahead and, Hit us up. <clears throat> we'll put it in front of Kelly and see if he's got an answer. You know, I am frustrated in my car by the um, the uh, remote locking, <clears throat> excuse me, not working, and my door locks are a little sticky. Do you fix that kind of stuff? You got any tips on that? Well, I just put third-party uh, stuff in the car. Um, every car I've owned, I've got to have, I've got to have a remote. You know, I these cars are getting old. The lock mechanisms are getting worn. So I like to use, uh, you know, the remote keyless entry. I just do a, a third party cheapo uh, remote keyless entry system in them. And as a matter of fact, if you look at the wiring diagram of the, of the, um, the central locking relay, I guess you call it, there's only three uh, contacts you have to worry about, the open, the close, and the ground. And you can install a third party system you know in a matter of a few hours huh. i didn't realize there was an option on on sobs well i've got in my spg i've got a third party uh keyless remote in it on my c900 convertible i've got a third party uh remote in it my other cars came with uh remotes so i didn't have to didn't have to uh, do that but it all comes from uh when i used to refer volvo 240s None of them had keyless remote entries. And what I would do is I'd put these cheapo AutoZone, you know, keyless remote entry uh, systems in them and they work great. Oh, wow. So uh, Morgan Thomas asking, have you ever installed a remote start with a keyless? No, I haven't. I'm not, I'm not, that, uh, I'm not that brave yet, but uh, I, I don't see any need for uh, a remote start. I live in Alabama. I, I maybe if I lived in the, the cold north, like you all live, that you might want to get the car heating up before you get into it, but I don't see the need for that. Yeah. One, one thing about the Saab doors is, though, you have to put, um, you have to transplant one of the actuators into the driver's door because the driver's door actuator um, is different than just an open close mechanism. So you have to, you have to kind of transplant the passenger side uh, or the rear door actuator into the driver's door. Oh, gotcha. So are you, uh, you, you had six sobs the last time uh, we talked. Is that still your count? Are you still, you said you're done buying cars. Is that, yeah. Your, yeah are I still you shifting any out? I still have six. And from time to time, I think I might sell one. My wife would love it if I sold one or two or three. But um, no, I still have my six. Everyone's different, and I, I like driving each and every one for a different reason. And um, so now I'm, I'm not in the market to buy, but um, like I always tell everybody, everything I own is for sale, but you're going to pay a good price for it.
<laughs> well, if they if they all look as good as your nine thousand, uh, they all deserve a chance on bring a trailer to see what the market will bring. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Guys, I think it's uh, about time we try to keep these down to about half an hour, and I think we're there. Uh, Kelly, anything you want to leave us with? Uh, are you still writing for uh, Nines Magazine? Is that going to come back? Um, I am not writing anymore. Um, my last issue was, uh, I think, the last issue that Seth uh, was the uh, editor on, and I haven't, um, I haven't written any more articles. I really haven't found anything more that that I want to write about to be honest with you so um, I'm kind of in limbo on that on that front well I always enjoyed those articles I always learned a lot I always learned a lot from watching your YouTube channel as well so I'll invite everybody to drop into just YouTube search sob magic man and uh, you'll find Kelly there hey thanks for being with us tonight thank you for having me good to see you mark again good to see you too Kelly that's a so, rip. I didn't know you guys knew each other. Oh, it was good stuff. That's great. So so that's next Thursday at 8 here on Sob Talk Live. If there's someone you think we should meet or a topic you'd like to cover, please reach out to us. Drop us on Facebook, on YouTube. Let us know what you'd like to see in future episodes. Yeah, so I'll tell you, next week we uh, have arrangements to connect with Isaac Edmund from uh, DO88 and... Uh, or do 88, I think is how it's pronounced. Mark and I were debating that a little bit earlier. So they make uh, hoses and intercoolers and radiators and all kinds of stuff uh, for sobs and, and other vehicles as well. So we're going to take a walk through some of their products and see what could, is out there to help you keep your car running cooler. And Isaac's going to join us uh, live. It's uh, from Nick Barn, Sweden. Uh, so it's going to be two o'clock in the morning over there for him. So we'll uh, see if it, he can stay awake through the broadcast. Awesome. Mark, we're going to wrap it up. We'll see you next week as well. Excellent. We'll be here next week at eight. Thanks guys. Good to see you. We'll, we'll see you next week.